Hi, and welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound Channel and part 11 in the series all about the modules in my Project 12 DIY Modular Analog Synth. And in this episode, we'll be looking at the Gate to Trigger Converter. Now, if you're like I was when I first started getting into all this analog and modular kind of stuff, um, Gate and Trigger. I struggled a little bit to fully understand what the difference was between a gate and a trigger. But I've come to realise that the clue is actually in the names. So let's start with gate. If you think of a gate, like a garden gate, you can open a gate, leave it open for a period of time, and then you can close the gate. In analog terms, Opening the gate takes the voltage from low to high. It will remain high for a period of time until you close the gate and then the voltage goes from high back down to low. So that's gate. Something you can open, leave open for a while and then close again. Trigger. What's a trigger? Well, think of a, a trigger on a gun. You pull a trigger, bang, and it's a sharp pulse it opens and closes it's a one hit analog terms you activate the trigger the voltage goes from low to high is only held at high for a very short period of time before it drops back down to low again and it will always be that short period of time each time you pull the trigger so for me, that was the way of actually understanding that. Ah, okay, so the difference between a gate and a trigger is all down to the length of time that the voltage is held high once it's been activated. So there you go. Very, very simple explanation of the difference between gate and trigger. So why should we be concerned about whether the voltage is, is staying high for a period of time or is just a, a, a short pulse. Well, it becomes important when you have a, a module that um, has an envelope built in. So what you want to do, you want to trigger the envelope and then allow the electronics in the module to actually determine what the voltage against time profile will be. So if you hit it with a gate signal and hold the gate high for a period of time, what you will tend to do is modify the voltage response curve of that particular envelope. Whereas if you hit it with a short trigger, you just give it enough of a high voltage to start that envelope that's built into the module that, that you're using. I mean, it could be an envelope generator itself. So if you're kind of holding the voltage high at the start of your envelope generator, you're not necessarily going to get the true voltage against time profile for that envelope. A really common example where you would want to actually use triggers rather than gates would be on a, a drum module. And in, indeed, when I come to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a drum module to demonstrate it because the drum module has the advantage of being an oscillator with a built-in envelope. The oscillator generates the the noise or, or the uh, oscillation frequency, if it's a tom-tom, -tom. um, and then the envelope determines how that decay for that drum sound is. So it's either a short, if it's a hi-hat, you can get a short tsh, or you could get a longer tsh, and it's the envelope in the drum module that's doing that. So we don't want to modify that envelope by holding the trigger voltage too high for too long, i.e. giving it a gate rather than a trigger. So, okay, so that's uh, kind of a bit of a lesson on the difference between gate and trigger and, and why it could be important in a, a modular analog synth. The circuit that I've used to build this particular utility module 
is the Ken Stone um, gate to trigger converter circuit. Um, I'll put a link to where you can find the schematic for that circuit. But what I've done is in, in that, in the original schematic, um, it provides for two gate inputs to give you two trigger outputs using uh, LM358 um, op amp. What I've done is build two of those, so I've got four inputs and four outputs. Also, what I've done is I've wired the inputs such that if you go in at the top of the panel, I'll demonstrate this, if you're going at the top of the panel, then the single gate input at the top will provide four trigger outputs for that one gate input. If you plug another gate input in further down that could be running at a different clock speed, and again, I'll, I'll demonstrate all this, then anything from there down will have will respond to that second gate input, but you'll still have the first gate input from the top down to where you put the second gate input in. So I can actually use the module to provide different trigger outputs. For instance, going through a clock divider um, would give me uh, a, a divided trigger output. So from one the one module, I can get different timed trigger outputs. All this will become clear when I come to do the demonstration. So what I did, like I say, I took the Kenstone circuit and I doubly took so there was two of them and I put it on a strip board and the strip board looks like this. Relatively straightforward, nothing too complicated there. Um, just lots of inputs and outputs. Um, then in order to get what I was talking about in, in the cascading of the gate to trigger, gate inputs to trigger outputs, I it, it all relies on wiring up a uh, switched input socket for the gate signals. So the, the actual panel wiring for all the sockets looks like this. So you can see that, that you go from the uh, tip on the gate input to the switch on the next one down and so on down to the bottom um, and the switches are normally closed so with nothing plugged in the signal gets passed down through all of them as soon as you plug something in it cuts off the signal at that point but still shares it below that point um, so there you go it's it's a uh, four in four out or whatever combination you can split on with, with cascading. So yeah, there you go. Um, let's go on over to the synth and, and have a look at the panel in a little bit more detail and then we'll stick some clock signals in, some, some gate signals in and get some trigger signals out and show you what the difference between gate and trigger is when you apply it to a, a drum module. This is the gate to trigger module. Um, ignore the little fellow he is, he's a bit of a diva really, it's uh, not really meant to be there. Um, so very, very simple, as you can saw from the uh, layouts that I showed earlier, we've got four gate inputs, and if you remember the wired such that the input at the top is cascaded all down four, we've got four trigger outputs and I've included LEDs down the middle just to give me a visual clue as to what's going on. So for this demonstration, when I'm, I'm taking a gate signal out of the Baby 8 sequencer, I'm putting that into the first gate socket on the gate to trigger and then out of the trigger and what's you can't see in in this uh, close-up but it's actually going into a hi-hat module so I'm going to turn the power on to the baby 8 so I've got a fairly slow sequence running on the baby 8 now if you remember what I was saying about the difference between a gate and a trigger 
in that a gate is a signal that will sit at high for a period of time while that gate is open until the gate is closed. Now what's happening on my baby 8 sequencer is the gate output is sitting high until it moves on to the next step. So if you look at the LEDs as they uh, move along on the baby 8, you can see at each step it stays quite bright until it moves to the next step. But if you look at the LEDs on the gate to trigger, what those LEDs are showing you is what's coming out of the trigger. So look at the difference between the length of time that the LED is lit on the baby 8, which is an indication of how long the gate is left open, and then look at the length of time that the LED is lit on the trigger output and you can see that what's happening is this conversion that I told you the difference between gate and trigger whilst this is being held this gate is being held open the converter is converting that into a trigger pulse so you're getting this very short period of time and in theory if I speed this up The actual time it's held high, the cycle time will be the same, but the time it's held high will be the same. Because it's all controlled from the gate to trigger converter. So, what you can hear there is the hi hat being triggered by the trigger output. Just out of interest, Let's take the trigger output out of the hi-hat and I'll put the gate input in. Now I've not touched any other controls whatsoever, I'm just swapping the leads around. And you can hear how it's, the voltages are slightly different so it, it, you'll get some effect from that. But what I hope you can hear is that it's modified the voltage against time profile of the envelope that's in the hi hat, so it sounds like the the hi hat, the, the gate, uh, the envelope is open longer. But I haven't touched any controls on the hi hat, so I haven't altered the decay on the envelope for the hi hat. It just sounds like it's been altered, but that's because the envelope in the hi hat is being modified by the gate signal being held high. So let's put it back into the trigger. Put the trigger back into the hi-hat and that's actually what the envelope should sound like on the hi-hat. So what I'm going to do now and again because we're in quite a fairly close up you'll have to take my word for what I'm plugging into where but I'm going to come out of the second trigger down and put it into a clock divider which will give me a divide by 2 output and I can put that divide by 2 into there and then if I take that divide, we should be able to see the divide by 2 by looking at the LEDs. So I take that divide by two output, put that into a snare, and there we go, we've got a bit of a drum pattern going. My clock divider will also give me a divide by four, so why not? Let's take the divide by four and trigger a kick drum. bit of a plodding beat. Let's turn the speed up a little bit. You will notice what I've done as well to, to do the, the um, divide. I've taken a, a trigger output. 
which means that although I'm not going back into the gate to trigger for my divide by four on my clock divider, I'm feeding the clock divider a trigger signal now rather than a gate signal. And although I double it back into a gate input on the gate to trigger, it will still treat it as though it's, it's generating a, a, a trigger output. So there you go. Very useful when you want to set up some uh, drum patterns. And a, a very simple, you know, cheap and cheerful utility module. So if you want to kind of um, hear the more genuine voltage against time profiles of your modules with built-in envelopes, then maybe you ought to consider using trigger signals rather than gate signals. And if you don't have trigger signals, then build a converter. I've given you everything you need, I've linked to the schematics and I've shown you a strip board layout which as you can hear it works for me so yeah go on, have a go, build your own.